Hey there, writers, and welcome back to the Well-Storied Podcast. My name is Kristen Kiefer, and this podcast is where I translate articles from the Well-Storied blog into audio so you can listen in on the go. Today, as we often do on Mondays, we are diving back into the blog archives to cover an article that was originally published in today's case on March 11th, 2016. And so I've been so excited to update this article for you guys, give it, you know, a little bit of a freshening up, and then to share it with you here on the podcast. This article is entitled How to Choose Your Novel's Point of View and Tense, and you can read along as you listen in by heading on over to well-storied.com slash tense. How you choose to structure and style your story's prose can make all the difference. Two of the biggest elements that affect your prose are, of course, point of view and tense. Does it really matter if you write your book in first person or third person? In past tense or present tense? In some cases, yes. In fact, point of view and tense are a bit like the clothes you wear each day. They may not change who you are, but they do affect others' first impressions of you. And a good first impression can make all the difference, right? So today, writers, we're going to explore the kinds of impressions point of view and tense can make and how you can be sure to choose the right option for your story. But first, we have to ask, who is narrating your story? Before we can discuss how to choose the best point of view and tense for your story, we need to ask this one simple question. Though most modern novels feature the protagonist as the point of view character, this doesn't have to be the case. Some writers choose to utilize a secondary character's perspective as the point of view, such as F. Scott Fitzgerald did in The Great Gatsby. We may follow Nick Carraway's experiences, but the main subject of the novel is most definitely one J. Gatsby. Other writers choose not to utilize a close narrative at all, instead using an external and often omniscient narrator to explore the story's events. Which type of perspective you utilize in your story is completely up to you, but the choice doesn't have to be a complicated one. Simply ask yourself, who would tell the best version of my main character's story? Often, this is the main character themselves. But in the case of The Great Gatsby, if Fitzgerald had told the story from Gatsby's perspective, the reader would have been deprived of all of the man's mystery and deception, making for a much less engaging story. Better to tell the story from the perspective of one who's just met him, Nick Carraway. If your story follows many characters through their lives, writing in multiple points of view may be a good option, but don't forget to consider an external narrator as well. Utilizing such a narrator would allow you to move quickly between characters' thoughts, events, and even separate timelines. External narrators can be a great option if you're only writing about one character's experiences as well. If you're looking to tell a story that reads a bit like a legend or a fairy tale, give an external narrator a try. But which point of view should you choose? Point of view is the mode of narration through which a story is told. Three general points of view exist. First person point of view uses the pronouns I and we. For example, I run through the woods, tearing through branches and tripping over roots. Second person point of view uses the pronoun you. For example, you run through the woods, tearing through branches and tripping over roots. And finally, third person point of view uses the pronouns he, she, it, or they. For example, she runs through the woods, tearing through branches and tripping over roots. First and third person points of view are most common, with second person often reserved for interactive fiction stories such as the Choose Your Own Adventure books. One example that breaks the mold, however, is the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin, in which second person is used to place distance between the protagonist and their experiences, reflecting the protagonist's state of mind. First and third person points of view each come with two main sub-modes, so to speak. In first-person reliable, the narrator tells the story as they see it from their perspective. This is the more popular first-person submode. In first-person unreliable, however, the narrator purposefully deceives readers to serve their own purposes. For two excellent examples of unreliable narrators, check out Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. Now for the third-person submodes. In Third Person Limited, the point of view is restricted to one character's thoughts and experiences at a time. With this submode, which is the more popular of the two, the narrator must be a character in the story. 
In third-person omniscient, however, an all-knowing narrator relays the stories of one or multiple characters. A narrator who shares multiple characters' thoughts and experiences is a true omniscient, while a narrator whose knowledge is limited to just one character is called limited omniscient. Whew, that's a lot to think about, right? If you are feeling a bit overwhelmed at this point, consider how different points of view are most often used. A first-person point of view is most frequently used in middle grade and young adult fiction, such as The Hunger Games or Diver Divergent, in literary novels, or in stories in which one primary character takes center stage. This is because first-person creates the least amount of distance between the point of view character and readers. It's intimate personal. It puts readers directly in the main character's shoes, encouraging them to not only see the world through that character's eyes, but to become that character for a time. Third-person point of view, on the other hand, is great for many high-action stories and those that take place in fictional worlds. Though it can still be highly, highly subjective, third-person offers slightly more distance between the point of view character and readers allowing readers to follow that character's journey more so than become that character. For this reason, third person often has a more visual, film-like quality feel that can be enhanced by utilizing other filmmaking techniques for written fiction. For more on those filmmaking techniques, make sure to check out the link in today's episode transcript at well-storied.com slash tense. All that said, there are plenty of novels that break these point of view norms. If you're unsure which would be the best fit for your story, choose the mode that feels most natural to write. Simple as that. Now, how about tense? Tense refers to verb tense, the tool through which you express action and its relation to time in your writing. There are two types of tense that are most often used in fiction. First up, we have present tense, which is when the action takes place in the moment, now. For example, I jump over the fallen tree trunk, narrowly escaping a nasty tumble. Books that use present tense include The Hunger Games, The Handmaid's Tale, and The Night Circus. With past tense, however, the action has already taken place. For example, I jumped over the fallen tree trunk, narrowly escaping a nasty tumble. Books that utilize past tense include To Kill a Mockingbird, Fahrenheit 451, and The Maze Runner. Typically, tense follows a similar pattern to point of view. Present tense is more immediate and personal, meaning it pairs well with a first-person point of view, while past tense allows for slightly more distance, making it more flexible. Strangely enough, however, present tense is the option that has a more film-like quality in this case, given the immediacy of film. Which verb tense is right for your story? Once again, the best option is always the one that feels most natural for you to write. It is worth noting that past tense is by far the most conventional choice, however. Because first person is far less common, it can sometimes feel jarring to readers. This doesn't mean there's anything wrong with writing it, but it's a note every writer should consider when crafting their stories. So, between point of view and tense, why is the best option always the one that feels most natural if first impressions can make all the difference? Returning to our clothing analogy, don't let the clothes wear you. Put on what's most comfortable, then walk forth with pride. Confidence will always make the best impression of all. Thanks for listening in to the Well Story Podcast today, writers. I hope you enjoyed our episode and found it helpful as you work to figure out which point of view and tense are going to be the best choice for your novel. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe to receive notifications about all future episodes. If you don't know, the podcast is now available at well storiedcom but also on YouTube, on SoundCloud, and on iTunes. So make sure to check out the podcast on whatever option you like best. If you're enjoying the podcast and would like to support all that I create for Well Storied, including the articles on the blog, the free email courses, the writing workbooks, and more, make sure to head on over to patreon.com slash wellstoried. If you don't know, Patreon is where you can support your favorite creators by making a small monthly donation that you define. So for as little as $1 a month, you can support all of the free resources that I create for Wellstoried, 
And all that really goes a long way towards helping pay for the bills involved in keeping Well Storied and this podcast in particular up and running. So if you would like to join the team and become a Well Storied patron, again, make sure to head on over to well-storied.com slash Patreon. Again, writers, thank you so much for listening in today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will see you guys soon. Until then, happy writing. Bye.